Time to go back to the past, to the very, very first World of Warcraft guild I ever joined. And I'm joined by a friend as well. Ladies and gentlemen, in last week's Friday feature, we talked about the Berserkers. And yes, that was the original guild I came from. And so many of you, especially if you've joined us over the last few years, seem to think we started at the top. And we were always in hardcore raiding guilds and doing all that kind of stuff. But that is not the case. There was a time back in the day with the clicking and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's time to revisit that. And thankfully... I am not alone, because my very first World of Warcraft guild, all the way back in the original vanilla, the Berserkers, I'm actually joined by somebody who works for Breach Gaming right now, who is also there with me, and it is where we met. So, this is a good time to have this conversation. Hello, Mr. Nups. Hello, everyone. Yes, we actually met in this guild, which uh, How led old to... Uh, I'm, all, I'm, I'm 30 years old now, so back then I would have been 15, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> This is a story, Mike, that branches into a lot of different areas, and I thought it was worth talking about because we, over the last two or three years especially, have heavily focused on trying to get people into World of Warcraft guilds. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, and it's a mistake I made massively, is a lot of people are in guilds, but they're in guilds that kind of developed after Mists of Pandaria, after Cataclysm, where they just absorbed the player base. And they sucked people in. And they basically are just secondary trade chats. We call them cesspool guilds. But people don't recognize that. But they didn't exist back then. They weren't really those guilds that were just like recruiting anybody and everybody all the time. For personal gain. Which is what a lot of these guilds are. And therefore people respond to us when we're saying join a guild. I am in a guild. Yeah. But it doesn't <laughs> do anything for me at all. Uh -huh. uh, it's bad. And... I mean, I mean, back then you didn't have any gold incentives, right? Right now, it's basically, um, it's basically like a, like a tax system is where the cesspools kind of get their stuff, right? Uh, and the power the, trip, the I reason. think. Yeah, the power trip probably as well. But back then, that didn't really exist. That that mechanic didn't exist, and you kind of had like conglomerate guilds where loads of casuals kind of joined and didn't really do much either. But there wasn't like any any bad intentions or any egos i think but um I, there were lack of the purpose is how i think about it is a lot of the when, it, when i think of vanilla world of warcraft and joining a guild it's a case it was the case that you joined for a purpose you had a goal in mind and you looked for a guild that had that goal whereas what can happen so often these days and it still happens even though blizzard has removed a lot of the incentives is you could be ungilded and you'll start receiving guild invites you know, people still hunt down people. Uh, it was particularly bad for in a few years ago, but it's still there today. But these guilds have no purpose. Or, even worse, and I'm sure you've seen examples of this, as is our audience, they have 8 million different purposes. They're a casual, relaxed, social, raiding, PvP, RBG, PBV, Mythic Plus, KFC, AT&T guild. <laughs> exactly. And, <clears throat> they, and the amount of drama stories we get, Mike, where it's like, I joined because they said they were raiding, and then a week later, I was the raid leader, and I'd never raided before, because they've just not organized anything. They're just collecting the player base and mm -hmm. hoping something will happen. Uh, that's kind of how these guilds are operating now, which is unfair to the people who are like, <clears throat> I've joined a guild. <laughs> You're telling me to join a guild. I did, and nothing's happening of it. Or what's even more bizarre, Mike, is the amount of drama stories, again, we get where these guys are heroic guilds, and in their off time, they pug and do better which mm. blows my mind <clears throat> no yes you would be amazed how often that happens is an organized collected group of people in a heroic raiding guild progress slower than a pug so their players regularly pugged and have experience on later bosses because the pugs do better than their guild do how does that and work? How do you how do you stay in a guild like that? <laughs> and I think that's why we're here today because yeah. That's exactly why we wanted to talk about it here today, because that should never happen. That shouldn't no. even be possible to have that situation occur. Yeah, I know it happens to so many people. And it's because they're basically in a, a worse pug, right? These, play, these guilds are soaking up players. There's no checks being done. We saw the response recently when I did the app thing, uh, where people were hugely negative about that process. 
Uh, well, a small, I, I need to be clear on that, an extremely small minority, because we're now also seeing how many people have gotten guilds off the back of that. So well oh, really? played to the guys. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've actually started getting that response now. I was like, yep, totally worked. Got in a guild straight away. Nice. And now I'm doing X, Y, and Z, right? Now, now my whole World of Warcraft outlook has changed. And it's tough for the players out there right now to be like, how do I get a guild <laughs> that's a guild guild and not a useless guild am i in a useless guild is often the question people are asking themselves uh, in this process is like it is a guild is it a good guild what am i looking for in doing this process uh, and also some funny stories because even though classic world of warcraft is coming to its end right now actually pre-patch came out yesterday mm -hmm. uh for the burning crusade and i assume most people are moving over to the burning crusade um it wasn't classic is not what vanilla was and I think we're all very clear on that. Classic is not what vanilla World of Warcraft was. And it's it's hard to compare because for many people, I, I doubt, if you didn't play vanilla, you're probably not going to see the difference between what Classic is and what vanilla was. So it's not a case of you had to be there, but there are differences, massive differences that occurred. And I, I, I have videos that you're playing in the background of our time in the Berserkers where we had people wearing pirate hats. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. <clears throat> And it blows my mind today that I was less ragey about it. But there's some cool stories to go alongside this. One is we both agree, because we did talk about this uh, leading up to this conversation. We were both so wrong for this guild. Like, I, I mean, I you weren't... Uh, we went two different ways, and this is kind of a therapy session for me. You weren't poison for this guild. I was absolute poison for this guild. Um, yes, not intentionally. I mean, we were <laughs> we were similar players with similar outlooks, similar motivations, probably like similar skill levels, right? Um, but we chose different paths through this guild, and um, that's probably like the most interesting story about this. Is which um, um, when I joined this guild, I, I probably didn't even know really what raiding was. I think because I was. Why did you join a guild? Let's start there. Uh. I mean, if I had to pinpoint the exact reason, I would probably be wrong. But if I had to guess how I was back then, I probably wanted to achieve more. I, w I wanted to do more. And I was running into problems being alone. I I I that's That that would have been it, I imagine. Um, this uh, well, well, was my first MMO, so I'm, I'm very sure I didn't know what, what raiding was. And I kind of wanted to dip my feet into it. I think that was probably what it is. Uh, Berserkers was a guild where you could join as a complete noob and uh, get rolled into doing things. So it was it was definitely like bottom barrel raiding at that point. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just wanting to do more things, I think. I'm, I'm pretty sure the same goes for you, right? So you were a solo player because we had different backgrounds coming into this. So mm -hmm. you were, you started well, not with friends or nope. recommendations from school or anything like no that. Any idea why you picked it up then? Uh, it was just the hype, I think. It was just, it, it was, everything was in the news, and I think I came off the back of, um, this is an, a nice insider for the people that did this, is, uh, I came off the back of playing a lot of Call of Duty 1, rifle only, competitive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't even uh, know what that is, but it sounds like it was real niche. It was real niche, but th there was, uh, there was, like, uh, loads of frag movies, and there was, like, mini competitions. I can't, what was it called again? like clan base or something it was like mm -hmm. sort of like a mini esports like very early very early stuff where you could have like european competitions and stuff like that i came with the back of that and the teammates that i played with there they started playing wow so i think that's kind of where it came from that's where i started to be interested in it but i had no idea what an mmorpg was i didn't know the mechanics i didn't know I mean, I, as I was leveling, I knew what dungeons were but i'd never been in a 40-man raid before so mm -hmm. i probably Did you hear stories to... Uh, I, I heard stories, you see, on my way up, is I heard about Ragnaros, and no. it was a total mystery, because videos weren't really available at the time. Uh, it's so weird, the landscape now is so ridiculously different to when we started, is it was all word of mouth, right? People mm -hmm. weren't really making videos. They were by the end of Vanilla, but certainly at the start of World of Warcraft, because I did get into the beta, uh, because we played another, I came from another MMO with a clan. And so they would obviously Blizzard was out poaching people who were interested in the MMO genre. So beta has started to get passed around. And I got into the beta and I didn't like it. <clears throat> and I, this is something kind of famous is I did not like World of Warcraft at all. I was still relatively edgy teenager. 
I was coming from a PvP-based third-person shooting MMO where it was very hardcore, where you got your loot by killing other players and taking their loot. That was how you could do it. You could just take their armor. So if someone had ash candy, you would just kill them and take their ash candy off them. Uh, that's how that game worked. Like, you dropped one random item out of your inventory in a thing on the floor so you could pick it up and take it if you died. So PvE seemed like really lame, <laughs> like super lame to me because I was like, I knew there were people out far, because all the items in my original MMO Neocron were farmed from PvE. You had to go farming treasures and rares and put things together and you built them. They were all constructed. But who would do that when you could just go and gank everybody and take all their stuff? Like it made no sense to me to ever PvE to get loot. And then coming to World of Warcraft, it was full of fairies. I remember I made a Night Elf Hunter first. So it was Darnassus, it was fairies, there were twinkly lights everywhere, and, you know, it was all very pretty, and... <laughs> and I, I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, in my other game, I'm flying Apache helicopters and tanks and, you know, bombers. You can hear the disturbed bases. in the background while you were playing, right? A hundred percent, and I still have the videos of that original MMO. I'll put one in the background now, and I can tell you it was done to, like, Kasabian, Metallica, Slayer, you know, everyone PvPing. That game looks a mess, I know. Don't, <laughs> you don't need to tell me. Uh, but So World of Warcraft really put me off, but eventually so many of the people left that game for World of Warcraft that my clan, was, uh, which was Darklight, which eventually would become our TBC guild, came over. So I came with a bunch of people, um to play World of Warcraft. We had a group of seven or eight of us that all played together. Um, and when it came to getting a guild, we obviously joined with aspirations of being the best guild on the server. We were going to rock it. We were going to be the hit. We, we would be the guild leaders. We would be in charge. Blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, the idea of recruiting like 40 extra people because you wanted a roster of like 40 to 50 people, right? At least. No, I'm not going to do that. And I, I joined the Berserkers and I, I, I've been thinking about this a lot re recently, but I think I was asked to help them out in some sort of run. And I was only level 56. And I did my first ever raid in World of Warcraft of Molten Core at level 56. And it was only because I had other friends in the US who weren't playing with us, but were, in our old MMO, we could, it was oh, cross, cross, cross the ocean, right? We could all play together. There was only one server. And the American guys were like, yeah, we did Ragnaros. 40 people and a giant fire lord comes out of the lava, you know, talked it up like a big thing. And then I saw someone in Molten Co uh, saw someone in Orgrimmar wearing the prophecy set. And obviously epics, at the very beginning of vanilla, epics were epic. That was the only time, by the way, and I think you know this as well as anybody, is epics were only epic for like a super short time in vanilla. Like, once ZG and shit were out, epics were everywhere. You know, people were wearing epics all the time. True, but there, uh, there, there were still, like, rankings of epics, right? If you saw a yes. mage with, like, netherwind shoulders from Blackwing Lair, that guy was the tits. Like, that yes. was that was a big deal. <laughs> I, it, but I saw Benediction for the first time. I nearly just came in my pants. So I was mm -hmm. like, holy fuck, that guy's done some things, man. That Indeed. guy's done some stuff. Um, it, that was, that was real RPG stuff. You know, Blizzard talks about the RPG stuff. It's like the rarity and standout stuff like that. That's the RPG stuff. Cause that, I was so envious and hearing these stories is like, we have to join a guild. And thankfully, although I was level 56, the berserkers were so desperate for healers that I managed to get me and uh, four of the remaining players. Cause as people do in World of Warcraft, they drop off during the leveling process. Uh, I negotiated in, which was kind of a normal thing back in vanilla. And I, I don't think it really happens today that much but it used to be a big negotiation because you couldn't cross realm right you were limited to the player pool of your one realm mm -hmm. is if you desperately needed x you could negotiate with that person to get more players in which is what happened to me it was and we want you as the priest that means you have to take i think we brought two warriors a warlock a mage <laughs> and like two other people into this guild with me uh, in order and to get no us in. guarantee that these people are good or useful in any way. <laughs> no, they were, which was thankful. They were mm -hmm. extremely good players uh, for vanilla standards. They wouldn't. Uh, they, isn't this sad? I know this is an aside. I don't know whether it's happened to you. I've had players come back after like three years or something like that, and they're fucking shit. Mm -hmm. And it really sucks. It really sucks. It's not because of they've not kept up to date. The game's just progressed too much, and the way they, you know, in vanilla you could get away. Especially in vanilla vanilla, you could get away with mortal striking, sweeping striking, and 
you could, you, you, you could click the, the entirety of like uh, Molten <clears throat> Core or Blackwing Lair and you'd be fine if you were decent at it. But if, the, if those kind of people were kind of playing at their maximum level at that point and they were comfortable at that level, then they wouldn't have progressed three years later or ten years later if they come back and like mop or something. And at that no. point, the game is just too complicated for them, unfortunately. And too fast. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel bad for my brother because he says the same thing. He's, he's considerably older than I am and he's like, the game's just too fast. I can't keep up anymore. Like, you know, it's not for want of trying. And I know my brain knows what to do. It's just all happening way too quickly for me. And I, I just don't like it. And I think you're right. I never thought of it that way. Is that they were great in vanilla, but that was their essential skill cap. Mm -hmm. And when we brought them back, I was like, I even reached out to people. This is what felt bad. I reached out to them individually when we were doing our own thing. It's like, I want you to come back to World of Warcraft. And I want you to like tank like you did back in the day. And they'd be all hype, and they'd come back, and it'd be like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> this is not working at all. <laughs> uh, and it crushed my dreams, my hopes and dreams. Indeed. You know, you know what? Okay. I, I, I reckon um, this probably would have happened to you as well. I think it was like a UBRS run that would have got me into this guild. Probably hmm. the same for you, because, and I imagine a lot of people will share that one as well, where that was like a 10-man... Mini raid? Would you call it a mini raid? It or was would you 15. call it a mega dungeon? Yeah. Raid? UBRS is interesting because it was, you could do it 15 man, but that was a raid. The dungeon was designed for 10. Yeah. So quests and stuff had to be done in 10 mans, but you could take five extra players. And I love this, and it's something I championed a few years back that Blizzard should do. Uh, because it really bothers me, and uh, this is nothing to do with joining a guild, it really bothers me that B Blizzard's pigeon had sold themselves into dungeons have to be Mythic Plus dungeons as well. Because there's no rule that says that has to be the case. That's why we're never going to get a BRD again. Which is really sad. Because it's a monolithic experience in of itself. Or a UBRS even. We're probably not going to see something that can be modified in that way. Because it's a good trade-off, right? You can do quests and you can do it in an organized group as 10-man. And you can also do Stratholme and stuff as 10-man as well. You just couldn't do the quests. But you could still get the loot, but you have to share it through. It's obviously more diluted because there's more players there. The bosses don't drop extra items, but you have an easier run. And that's the trade-off you make as a player. It's like, are you just after an item? Then maybe you want to go 15-man, or you want to 10-man this 5-man dungeon. Because it's pretty challenging. Right? It's a pretty challenging dungeon. And they get to create more elaborate experiences that way. Instead of saying everything also has to be put into the Mythic Plus mold. You see, we did the new dungeon recently, right? Uh, Tazabesh. Mm -hmm. yep. We both did that. There's an opportunity... I mean, personally, I think there's an opportunity to build a proper, massive mega dungeon. It just doesn't have to fit into Mythic Plus scenarios. Because you could... In Tazabesh, uh, there's a very clear line where basically one dungeon ends. Like, they literally have a wall that you have to teleport. It's like a... It's, like a, it's a basically just like a well that you click and poof, you're in another dungeon, basically. You're in right? another dungeon. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're, you're straight up just in another dungeon. And it's so clear and obvious that they've had to, like... Build, it's just two dungeons glued together and they're calling it a mega dungeon instead of something like BRD, which is like, you can do whatever you want. This place is sprawling. It's got internal quest lines that you can get done. Backtracking. It's got the vaults, you know, where you turn in the pristine diamonds. You don't have to go that way. You can get to different parts. You can come back around. You can have a big run in there. It gets harder. I mean, what does BRD cover? It's like four different item uh, player levels, right? It's something like 54 to 60. Something crazy like that. Uh, s <laughs> I, I can't say for sure. It, you could definitely complete it uh, during the leveling process. It's yeah. not strictly 60, although many people did it at 60 because it was kind of like an inflection point, right? It was... You were doing dungeons, five-man dungeons, throughout the entire leveling process, and then once you start reaching cap, there's a there's a there's a there's a bigger dungeon with more people allowed in, with mm -hmm. uh, more elaborate mechanics and uh, more elaborate rewards, which is kind of like kind of like a taste of what raiding could be. And yes, exactly. I imagine that would have got my appetite going on uh, exploring what a raid even is. UBRS was that for me. I never did UBRS 10 man during vanilla. And I, mean, I talked to people in class. I fa in fact, I think they restricted it so you can only do 10 in classic. I'm sorry if I'm wrong in that. I think they made it 10 only in the classic version. But for me, I never did UBRS as 10 man. Not a single time. I did UBRS uh, tons of times. But it was always 15 man. Always. Because people just wanted the items, right? They weren't bothered about the quests anymore unless they were doing it with a guild. That was like a guild activity almost was to do it. To do Stratholm 5 man was a, like an gr organized group activity. It was much harder. Every, every time I did Stratholme or anything like that, it was 10-man. 
um, because that was the easier way of doing it. And people always take the last the path of least resistance for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, I, again, I, my memory might be shocking here, but when they brought in the 0.5 gear, I think that had to be done five man. So you almost have this level of progression that was outside of raiding is to move it up that way. It's like, okay, take this dungeon you've been doing 10 man. Let's do it five man now. I think that's what they did to try and give people a stepping stone. I can't uh, recall. I, I do remember down. the 0.5 gear, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because that that that's quite iconic, right? Like the the warrior stuff and like Arcanite Reaper, like those those are the items, right? Before you go into Molten Core, but uh, I don't, don't remember game. the exact mechanic. Yeah, Is it a absolutely. Game? Could, we had, I mean, you wouldn't even it would even make sense any, now to bring in a complete tier set upgrade path challenges for a gear set that was lower because it was lower than Molten Core gear, if I remember, uh, the, or it was around that stage. But was um, technically soloable because you just had to join five mans. You know what I mean? It it's doesn't kind of really make sense spot. with a group finder looking for raid environment. I guess that that just kind of ruins it. I suppose. Yeah, I was amazed at how popular it was. Uh, but you're probably right. Yeah, I think I ran into the berserkers. I thought even then the name was terrible, <laughs> like absolutely fucking awful. But I raided Molten Core the same night I joined. That's why I joined at level 56. I told them, you know, I'm not capped. Um, what do you? And they were like, "It's fine. Don't worry about it." And I thought it was crazy, but obviously we've seen from classic people did it at like fucking level fifty-two or something ridiculous in Molten Core. They mm -hmm. like smashed it to pieces uh, with most of the raid being below sixty. Um, I was talking about what was the biggest shock to joining a guild that I had, and for me it was the culture shock. A hundred percent took me so by surprise because. Up until then, I hadn't really been exposed to a lot of people from different nations. We had people from California in my previous clan, people from Scotland, maybe one or two European people, but not many. And the Berserkers was run by, in a web cafe, which totally blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And a Serbian guild is what it was. <laughs> it was a Serbian run guild. Um, and they were, they just had completely different ways of living, I'd, I'd say, uh, yeah. and playing. Um they just spent the entire nights at the cafe. I'm not sure if did they even have a computer at home that was capable of playing WoW. It was the first time I was exposed to the idea that n none of these guys had home computers. Like, it was strange to have that. I think, uh, I think a couple of might have had... I uh, might have had a PC capable of running WoW, but they, they, I think a couple chose to be in a cafe because that was just kind of the norm. That was maybe the, the social norm, the, the cultural norm yeah. there, where they just enjoyed being together in a cafe... Uh, having some drinks, having some laughs together, being able to see each other, playing, being able to shout at each other. Uh, I bet I mean, it was super fun, right? Absolutely. It was like a LAN party every day. I can totally imagine <laughs> us sitting in a cafe together, Mike, and having an absolute ball shouting at each other and, and bouncing around, right? Yeah, and the, the trade-off is, it's really... It was the point where everybody else who wasn't part of that environment just didn't wasn't aware of things. No. So <laughs> they would just stop and go for lunch together like mm -hmm. they would just get up and like okay we're getting kebabs now and then that half the raid team would just be afk <laughs> and, like, and, and you, you you would only be told when you had to be told when something was happening like you wouldn't be in on the conversation that was happening in the net cafe right they, they would no. only uh, press push to talk when something needed to be said like oh we're afk for a second that's it <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it almost felt like being sometimes it felt like being an inconvenience like them uh, having yeah. to talk to us was like being an inconvenience uh, because they'd already talked about it, discussed it backwards and forwards, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then they would come back and be like, yeah, so just do, just kill things. In fact, I I checked through, because um, ultimately, we did say before, we were wrong for this guild. But we didn't know that at the time. And this is kind of the message that maybe comes around to you guys. We both had aspirations way above what the Berserkers were capable of. Um, and I had my ideas of what a guild should be. And this wasn't it, even though I tried to change what it was. And Mike did not. <laughs> Uh, but I actually found our healing leader was a guy called Necrophage, who was one of the Serbian dudes. Um, and he just says, heal boss, drop tremor. That's the healing team's instructions to the, what, 14 healers or whatever we bring along. Something ridiculous, right? I mean, to be fair, the mechanic isn't more complex than that. But... <laughs> 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 yeah that's kind of true does it need more than that uh -huh. <laughs> probably not probably not but you know they talked about this a ton of times because that was the impression we always got is they've had a lot of conversations and it wasn't going to happen 
Um, do you remember your first raid? What did it feel like? I remember being stood. Let me give me give me mine for the context. I remember being stood in front of those molten giants for the first time, with forty people around me, and I, I could see the video. I had nameplates on, so it was just a sea of names, and it didn't even process to me that this was forty other players or thirty nine other players all together, and especially the comms talking. Like, everybody, you know, seeing all those names and comms for the first time was fucking mind-blowing to me. The comms weren't that crazy, though. You'd think it'd be an absolute mess of voices, but a lot of people were completely quiet because they were kind of socially awkward. They were probably having their first raid experience ever as well. So there weren't actually that many voices talking through mm -hmm. each other. Um, but I remember that moment where you gather in this, like, little, like, circular room um, for those two molten giants, and those two molten giants are the first two molten giants that you see in this entire game, right? None of the mm -hmm. enemies have been as big, or, like, trash enemies, at least, have been as big as these two dudes. And you stand there with 40 dudes, you have, like, this mage camp, you have, like, a rogue camp, you have a warrior camp that are kind of uh, talking to each other in, like, clash channels. And clash then channels. clash channels, yeah. And then uh, at some point, the rake leader says, "We go," and you pull the two molten giants, and you start firing on one molten giant and a couple of retards. They fire on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and they start running around, stomping people. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think I went oom the first pack. I spam healed so much because I just assumed these things were going to wreck the team. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so it's, I thought they were going to stomp them into and the absolute ground. And they do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did nothing at all. And I just stopped and was like, okay. I, I think it really puts you at ease for having a raid like that. And uh, um, Molten Core does that really well. Because all the trash all the way there, it's tedious. And I hate doing Molten Core. I went back and did Molten Core in Classic when I did play Classic. And I fucking hated it. I absolutely detested the trash in there. It's awful. It's badly placed. It's all irritating. It's not fun. And uh, I mean, nothing really happens. But it's right? a good they're tutorial. Just, they're, they're, they're big mobs that have really hard auto attacks, but like the only mechanic is tank, pick up the mob, keep it there, keep aggro, healers keep the tank alive, and then you just like eventually kill it. That's that's what happens. Stand right? on the surger. I've got to get to stand on the surger. Oh, I yeah. don't think we ever achieved that once with the berserkers. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think we ever achieved that that one time. Um, right, so we have to talk about the kind of weirdness that happened here. So you became Mage Class Master pretty quickly, I think. I think it was after our first uh, Lucifron kill, where I don't I don't recall exactly what happened, but something was it detect magic or something that you had to keep up mm -hmm. as a mage. Yep. Um, yeah, that's not. It's not. I don't think it's Lucifron, is it? Who's the guy who blinks? Shazra. Shazra, yeah, they're, they're, they're two, they're, like, they're the same model, basically, right? They're like yeah, those, yeah. those snake people, dog nagas, whatever. But um, something had to happen. Some mages that were in the guild, they were having trouble with it. I said, I'll give it a go. And then I probably, I probably, I probably did it I'll fine. Give it a and, go. And then, <laughs> and then it was like, okay, you're, you're the class master now. Welcome to the officer team. Uh, it's such a bad guild. Oh my god! <laughs> That's how it went, and at that at that at that age, you're age fifteen, you think to, you're thinking to the absolute bomb, right? And then you're saying, "Okay, I'm the class master now. I am the biggest boy in this raid." Yeah, <laughs> and you go with it, and you start. I do call you take it very seriously. Absolutely, as I yeah. always do. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's never changed, even though I was a teenager. Um, everything was serious. That everything had to be efficient. And if things were inefficient, you were uh, getting a scolding in the mage uh, class channel. <laughs> I agree. I, I, we did go, both follow that path, uh, which I, I hate my history in the skills. I do. <laughs> I hate my history so much. Yours is a bit rougher than mine, I think. Well, you took the wise decision. And again, this is something we apply to people. So, I mean, the, the, the short end of the stick here is... It was a really bad guild. Uh, they, they never killed Vale. Uh, and as we talked about in the last, last Friday feature is when Vale was pulled like four times, the strategy was all set in stone. We knew exactly what to do and it just completely failed. Within seconds. Like it just fell apart within seconds. And it was just so clear. It's like they're never getting past this. And it should have... I, I, sh I should have seen the writing on the wall when you did. I think you left... After the guild had killed Ragnaros, 
I think you were there for the Ragnaros kill. I was uh, there. But... I was there for Razorgore. Uh, I went through that. That was an, a, like a huge headache because no one wanted to progress. People wanted to stay in Molten Core. They were they were a Molten Core guild. They were essentially a feeder guild where people got gear. The ones with ambitions, they left with that gear, and you got a couple new people in, gave them gear to keep raiding Molten Core. Progressing Blackwing Lair was just a step too far for this guild that I noticed as soon as we did kill Razorgore, but had incredible trouble getting people to show up for uh, Veil progress raids. And at that point, I said, okay, this is probably not the raid for me. The more I'm going to look for uh, a guild that is doing content that I want to do. Um, I think, I think was... this is an important note. When do you know that the guild is no longer suitable for you? Because mm -hmm. I didn't recognize it um, at all. I, 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 I've been thinking about this more and more the last few days when we've been talking. And I've been reflecting on it as much as I can. Because ultimately I kill this guild. Uh, check story time one for that. I'll put a link down below. Um, not intentionally. There was no maliciousness involved in it, really. But... I, th I think I felt, and I see this a lot in drama time as well, is this absurd amount of loyalty to a guild that gave me a chance at level 56. And I think that's where it stems from. I think that's like the root cause. Is I was level 56, they invited me, they invited my friends. We met some awesome people in this guild. Like, absolutely, absolutely awesome people. Mm -hmm. um, very few, but the people we did meet, who we connected with, we connected really strongly. And I met them IRL, I went on a holiday with, with some of them. Like, so, when we say the guild was bad... That was the thing with 40 man raiding, and I think we talked about this in the top five reasons 40 man raiding is amazing. Is there's so many people that you find these people that are just perfect for you. And that that is again a good reason to join a guild. When I'm talking to people and saying join a guild, it's because although my family plays World of Warcraft, my nephew, my nieces, my brother, my best friend Andy played World of Warcraft for all those years, I never connected with any of them. Even though we are gamers and we play the same video game, we are on different paths. Very different paths. And that just almost seems absurd to people in, game, in gaming terms. It's like how niche you can be in World of Warcraft is crazy. And then you get into a raid. Okay, we enjoy raiding. So we've, we've broken it down a little bit more. But then you find somebody like yourself who has those same goals and ambitions. It's like, well, I want to this is not enough for me. I want to be at the finish line, right? That's where I want to be. And I want to take it seriously. And I want to think about my character. And I want to think about my rotation. And I want to progress. And I don't want to see people who are struggling to press detect magic. That's not what I want in my life. When do you... Rec that You connect with some of those people in a 40-man raid, right? There are a couple of them in there. And then that's where you kind of do go on and make your own guilds. Which is what we did in the Burning Crusade. Is we took those people and we made our own guild. Um... So there's where the paths diverge. But you this, just this, were like, yeah, this, I'm going. Th this concept still uh, is the same today, I think. And it's very important to realize that this concept has never, ever changed where you have to have the right ambitions for the guild. If your ambitions are lower than your current guild, it's stressful for yourself. It's stressful for the people that are getting annoyed by probably the mistakes that you're making, by the lack of uh input that you're giving into getting gear into getting good into researching logs but the same goes if your ambitions are above the guild uh, which was the case for you where people didn't want to do the things you wanted to do and if you're in an officer role if you're in a guild master role and your ambitions are far above the average of your raid it can create incredibly stressful situations that isn't good for either and at that point mm. It's really hard to say, okay, I'm going to stop here because a lot of friends are probably in, in, in your situation or in your guild and you don't want to say goodbye to them. But in the end, I always think it is the better choice to match ambitions, motivations and skill over social aspects, uh, especially when it comes to raiding. That is essentially a, a competitive mode, right? Well, you can still play with those people. It is easier yeah. now more than ever, right? It was less easy back then. Uh, and I think of some of the famous names. When I look through these logs, I see names that absolutely would never have progressed past Molten Core. Like a, a guy called Balthazar. German guy, always drunk in raid. Barely had a grasp of English. He, he used to call my Benediction a pizza spoon because he couldn't remember the name Be uh, Benediction. But I would... I love playing with that guy. 
I absolutely adore it. It's terrible at the game. Like, absolutely fucking awful. And it's there, there is no way that would match up. And ultimately, what happens is exactly what we see when people re-roll or they're trying to motivate their guild or a guild leader reaches out to me. It's like, how do I motivate my guild to do better? If you're having to do that and, like, try and push and push and push and push to get them to do stuff, it's ultimately probably not going to work. Like, sometimes it does, unquestionably, but for the most part, it's probably not going to work. And that's where I found myself, because it honestly didn't make any sense to me. And we've got to remember, in vanilla, it was a full linear progression curve, right? You didn't just get the new raids here and go and do normal mode in there, and then wait till the next raid and go do normal mode in there. You had to complete Molten Core to do Blackwing Lair, to do AQ40, to move on to Nax. That was the stepping stones that you had to walk along. And it made no sense to me to be satisfied with just doing one of the four tiers of raiding. That made no sense. I, I couldn't even process that in my brain. It's like, why would you just be okay with doing Molten Core? I don't get it. Whereas now I could say, I can see the appeal of getting pretty decent gear. Not the best. But it takes like a farming guild an hour to clear Molten Core. And it's really easy. I have a full set, which looks cool. So you remember, there's no transport back then. So you've got a full set of Night Slayer or whatever it might be. And I'm fine with that. And after that, I'll go on PvP. I'm not going to get crushed because I've got semi-decent gear. I'm, I'm good. And I can totally see where they're coming from now. But at the time, if someone tried to explain that to me, it's like, yeah, Blackwing Lair is right there. And we're clearing Ragnaros in an hour. So why wouldn't we go and do Blackwing Lair and get even better gear and face new, fresh challenges? Why wouldn't we do level two? Um, and I don't get it. I don't get why would you join a raid guild to not want to progress anymore? That's uh, that's but, that's kind of where ego steps in, right? And um, where it probably took over a little bit for you. Where um, I, I don't know if you want to you, you want to tell the tale of how how you approached kind of destroying this guild, uh, wanting to push Blackwing Lair with these people. You that make it not... sound like I went to destroy the guild. I didn't do that. Not that's intentionally. Not, not, intentionally. not intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of sad. So a lot of the Serbian team fell away. So there was gaps. You know, Nups left. So there was we needed a new mage class master. And we didn't have great mages. Uh, and this was a kind of weird thing. Because I, I became the priest class master uh, after a while. After a couple of our friends left. But my priest team, and I looked through this. I had uh, a girl called Celia, who was from Russia. Who couldn't stay online. She could only heal on trash. But I don't know what the background is there. And I'm certainly not going to put aspersions on her. But for whatever reason, they would not let her go. Um, no matter what. I wanted to kick her. I did kick her once and she was invited back the next day while I was offline. Um, but for whatever it is, she couldn't stay online for a boss. She would come, she would re-log in after the boss had died to get loot. And they, they gave her loot and I was like, I don't know what's going on there. Um, Necrophage was one of the, was the original class master. He was one of the Serbian team, but he just stopped playing for whatever reason. And basically we had all these gaps. So ultimately I kind of became raid leader and things like that. So it, and also the off, and then I got to choose officers, and I chose people who were like-minded to me, which meant my officer team were all about Blackwing Lair. So that's the problem, right? Of course, I'm going to recruit the more serious people. I've, I've got to, rec I've got to promote the officers to be more like, like-minded to myself, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Who want to progression? Who care about their characters? But ultimately, you are 100 percent correct. Is my officer team was the Blackwing Lair team. Every single other person in that 40 man raid was molten core. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, and nothing else. <sighs> God, did I try and push them? <laughs> I pushed them so hard. <laughs> and they didn't want it. That they one, didn't want it. That one <laughs> screenshot, which I'm sure will uh, appear on screen very, very soon, is, mm. is very telling of the situation where you had a molten core raid uh, scheduled for that night. Everyone yep. joined because everyone wanted to do Molten Core. And at that point, you made a raid announcement, Mike. Yeah, I said, go to Blackwing Lair. And if you leave the raid, you're punished. Because they were, that's what used to happen. It's time for Blackwing Lair. Sorry, I've got to go. And the raid team would just start logging out. Um, and it was unworkable. It was just... And I should have gone ages. Because you were telling me. I remember you, you whispering me when you were raiding AQ or Nax or whatever. I was still in Molten Core when Nax came out. Like, that's where I was. Um, and I've been there for a long time. And I, part of it was me and the officer team believed they could do it. Uh, and they stuck with me. Uh, so we could, we can make this happen. We just need to recruit better people. And of course, as you pointed out, that's not the type of guild it was. It was a feeder guild. 
is we did recruit good people, but those good people went, all oh, right, I see what's going on. See ya. After yep. they got their loot, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, I get it. This is a feeder guild. I'm out. Bye. And then, you know, what, what was happening more and more, and I think this is what fed into me ultimately never making this decision or being in this situation ever again, is I worked really hard to recruit people who then came to my raid, got loot, because nobody needed anything. And that's what freaks me out as well, Mike, is people are happily farming Molten Core when they didn't need anything. Like, they couldn't possibly get an item, but they didn't want to do Blackwing Lair either. I mean, um, they probably had really good gear. They were probably missing, like, one or two items for the transmog sets or, like, the, the, the Core Hound Tooth Dagger. Or like, the, what, the, the, those key pieces. But there were plenty of people that were just happy to raid, like you say, together with friends in their Nat Cafe or... Uh, other people around the world who were just happy to be doing something that they enjoyed. It wasn't too difficult. It was uh, still epic with 40 man. And even though they didn't need loot, they still had a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, was the, that, that is exactly what those guys were. But I didn't see the writing on the wall. You whispering was like, just leave. Just go somewhere else. Um, and I, the stupid thing was, I'd been asked to join other guilds because I'd done, you know, five bands or whatever. And ZG was about and AQ20. I had joined other guilds, AQ20 runs, and they were like, "You should just why are you in that guild?" Because I was a good player, right? I was still a mega clicker, but as we said earlier, that didn't actually matter that much back then. Uh, players were so bad. I, I didn't start keybinding until the Burning Crusade, but I was one of the better priests on the server, even though I was still by by modern standards absolute trash. Uh, but it didn't matter then. So the, people the were game, offering me to leave. Yeah, the game, but the game was at a very slow pace, right? So the pace yes. was like probably two, maybe three times slower than it currently is. And what really mattered back then was that you knew the mechanics of like mana and like spell ranks and which rank to cast at which time, and how not to go oom while still keeping the tank alive. Like those were the key things that made you a good priest back then which you had under control and you could mm. easily click back then and you would still, you would be regarded as one of the best pieces on the server. Yeah, and it was it was weird because that fed into the ego as well. It's like, well, I can make these guys better and they didn't want it, <laughs> like at all. They didn't want it. Yep. Um, and so, God, when would I have left? I probably would have left with you, honestly. That's probably where I should have gone instead of trying to do this kind of thing but it's that awkward moment that i think we we all run into because it, i can tell you that it didn't and it didn't stay this way because uh, when i left dark light and the Burning crusade actually i'd learned the lessons of this and then hopefully you guys will too is i told the guild i wanted to push harder than what we were doing and they were like no <laughs> i don't really want to do that and they were like, you should go and find a better guild. Go for it. You know, and I was like, okay. And I, I accepted it instantaneously at that point. I was like, yeah, okay. If I'm not going down the Berserkers route again. Of dragging these guys, kicking and screaming through content they didn't want to do. And I feel that's the same for a lot of guys out there who are like, I, I'm in a guild, but I want to raid. And they're just not doing anything. Or certainly if you're in these heroic guilds that aren't, that are doing worse than pugs. And you feel you're better. But that's the important thing. If your aspirations are better or higher, then yes. But if you're happy there, that's fine too. That's fine. Right? Just, just be honest, right? Just, honesty is is incredibly important in this case. Like lying about your ambitions or lying about how you feel in the guild is just going to lead to bad things. And we see it every time, and even in like very high, like top 100 mythic guilds. Like as long as you stay for the tier, if you commit to a tier and don't quit mid tier. You're fine. If at the end of the day you say, okay, I had, I had a lot of fun with you guys, but my ambitions are higher or my ambitions are lower, and you tell that to the guildmaster, I don't think anyone is going to blame you or like shout at you for making a wrong decision or having like a wrong opinion. At least for all the guilds I've been in since coming back to WoW after like my little bit hiatus, which was like mop. If someone was honest and did it at the right time, Everyone was applauding them if they went upwards. Uh, good luck, dude. Thanks for thanks for raiding with us. I, I hope you kill some awesome bosses. And I, I think well, that, it, that, yeah. that still goes. That still goes. It happened to us in our last guild that Ball Fight Ugly died. As we knew, we knew before we'd killed the last two bosses, 
like several players are going to pieces because they are students and they have the free time so they want to push for the world first so they're going to pieces and they let us know really early on it was no secret right that those guys are doing that and i think we can go back to even not like this which we'll talk about in a different video because that guild also died unfortunately as guilds do it's not strange it does happen uh but jacks i think jacks made it very clear um midway through a tier and you probably know a little bit more about it than me that he was leaving at the end of the tier yeah it was uh, fire citadel so yeah before we got to i think it was Madaroth. so there was for a guild like that which was like top uh, three four hundred or something like that uh Manoroth and then the last boss uh was still like two months of progression or something so two months before the end he said okay guys <laughs> i i love you all i want to try for a higher rank and he announced it and he said, when, when, we, when we kill the last boss of this tier, I'm going to go look for a top one on the guild. And we still love him to this day. <laughs> because I played with him again. He, he right actually joined. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah absolutely. I played with him now. Uh, yeah. That's a good... Not ninja leaving in the middle of the night. That's not the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you announce... Do you remember? Because Berserk is not only your first guild that you joined, proper guild. But uh, do you remember how you told them you were leaving? Did you... Did you have you ever bowed out, is what I want to say. Have you ever done the, the late night log off... G quit. Yeah, I imagine that was the case in this guild. Uh, you think so? <laughs> I wasn't. I mean, I, I didn't have the values I do have. I have now. I was. I was a teenager. Uh, I was ambitious. I probably just applied, got accepted, and in the middle of the night, I probably said goodbye, guys. I'm going to another guild when probably no one was online that even knew me, <laughs> <laughs> and I was gone. Right? I, I'm pretty sure that would would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny i don't know how i left this guild i can't remember uh, i wish i've racked my brain but i have no idea how it went down i could not tell you for the life of me i'm not hiding that by any, any reason at all i just do not know i know it was during veil vale. i knew i know that at that point stood in front of that boss and i was like yep i'm done i know i already had an invite to another guild waiting uh, I just whispered somebody. I was like, so you still got a spot for a priest? And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, I don't think I G-quit mid-raid or anything like that. I've never done anything that ridiculous. But I I, I, I kind of think I just typed out this line in G-chat that was like, okay, I'm leaving now as raid leader and guild master, which is what I was. And I don't uh -huh. know who I gave guild master to. I have no idea. And then just quit. I think, I think something like that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, I, I feel I know everything about this is horrible. I, I know it was several months after I left because um, oh, I, I think I think you you joined the same girl that I joined to take my next step. But at that point, I had already moved on again because you know a, a feeder guild can be at, at any point. It could be a bottom feeder guild. It can be a, a, like a mid tier feeder guild. Like mm -hmm. the, the guild that we joined, which was, was confused, was basically like a mid feed uh, feed. The guild, most corrupt guild I've ever been in. Which we uh, will get into uh, in a later episode. But, yeah, that uh, needs a whole episode because yeah. that, that guild is just the most... Talk about change your whole perspective on a guild. Because the, what I think of when I think of the Berserkers, super nice people, really just enjoyed raiding, um, and absolutely were not the guild I should have... I, I mean, a great starter guild. I got to learn mm -hmm. a little bit, but I should have left very, very early. Um at least when you did like once we've hit blackwing lair and it wasn't going anywhere that should have been the, the tail end yep. i know i mean i remember relearning anixia while you were in nax we were clearing molten core and in like an hour hour and 15 hour and a half we're doing anixia no problem and then we would hit the stage where we'd lost so many players and this was a combination of one the people who were good and had ambitions were just like okay see you uh bye and also the guys who I was pushing too hard being like, well, I don't want this. Like, I'm leaving as well. So the guild started to fall apart from both ends. I was losing the top end and I was losing the core members at the same time. But still refilling it all the time because everybody wanted Molten Core, right? If you had a chance to get into a Molten Core guild, you were fine. Um, so it wasn't hard to find more people. But had, people didn't, they didn't, we had so many new people that they didn't know how to do an exit. And that was like... <laughs> The wake-up calls were starting then, right? You can imagine the horror of having to reprogress something like Anixia after you've been doing it since the start of the game, pretty much, or since Anixia came out. And still be there going like, hey, opening that friends list and seeing you and Nax Ramos, Salenti, and, and these are names you won't know, but these are people who came from Berserkers. And like mm -hmm. I said earlier, I was now seeing people I would recruit fresh off, fresh off the boat in Ogrimmar, 
sticking them in Mortal Core, gearing them up, and then looking where they are now, because I had them on friends list in order to whisper them for potential applicants, and we're now in AQ40. They passed Blackwing Lair. They, they joined, got everything from my guild, and then gone on and were like two tiers ahead of me at that point. And just being like, what is going on? <laughs> but still sit deep down thinking, we'll get there. <laughs> I just have to find the right motivating thing to get us there. Mm -hmm. But we'll get there. What would, what would you summarize your experience in? My experience is pretty well known in Berserkers. But for you, I assume it's actually quite a good one. You got your stuff. You did well. You became a class master. And then you moved on to bigger and brighter pastures. Absolutely. I think... Um, like the, one of the defining moments was when Zulgurub came out, I think. Which, um, I don't know the exact circumstances, but... The way that we did Zulgurub with Berserkers, I think it was like on off nights or something. It was just like, mm -hmm. kind of like haphazardly and... Loads of like super super casuals who had not even like uh, stepped into Mon Core. We were we were raiding Zulgur up with those people. I think mm -hmm. we were wiping a lot. We were we were progressing a lot, and I still have incredible fun memories of doing Zulgur up on just an off night, just having fun, having awesome people in the guild to talk to, and just learning about the game, learning about the mechanics, learning about how to be good, how to stand out. Um, how to be a good friend to other people. There's there's so much stuff that I can take away from that guild, and I I really have very few negative thoughts about about that guild. It's um for me it was probably the ideal start to WoW and raiding and being competitive in in in, in World of Warcraft. Mm. I mean, for me, my all my vanilla proper raiding experience comes in like the last three four months of vanilla mm -hmm. uh because of my time in berserkers i spent so i invested everything i had and it made me hate the game <laughs> i mm -hmm. hated the guild when, when i left i hated them i hated them so much and i blamed them for everything i'm sure i was like you fuckers <laughs> i've been here for like a year i've been pushing you and working you and grinding you to the bone and you're still not getting anything done you're all leaving and progressing past me which is my own damn fault. Like an absolute, complete moron uh, to put up with that. Not to put up with it, but to put myself through that and put them through that because I have no doubt they think I was just a dick. <laughs> just absolute dick. Um, yep. I, I, I think I can, I can guarantee that. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, to walk away from this little discussion, if you do want to hear more about some guild stories, we, we do have the most corrupt guild we were ever in. Uh, both of us, I was, I only found out recently you were in Confused as well, mm -hmm. uh, of Balnazar, but Jesus Christ, that guild. Um, so starting our own guild, uh, you were the first person I recruited, I think. Uh, one of the first whispers I sent out. One, one of the few the whispers, TBC yeah. Guild. Maybe like one of the first five people that you said, hey, I have this idea, uh, I want to start my own guild, and I, I want to become the biggest and best guild, uh, in TBC. That was basically the start of that guild, right? You didn't last particularly long though, if I remember. Um, I'm not sure why. Because I don't think you didn't leave to go to another guild. You just stopped playing. I'm guessing. Yeah, at that point, uh, my time investment to the game kind of became that much that my school uh, stuff uh, started suffering, and I just chose to uh, basically pull the cord and focus on other things until I came back in mop. So I completely I missed out on there. wrath and on uh, cataclysm. Yeah. Oh, you missed out on Wrath as well. Yep, and, and oh, the tail end of TBC. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Black Temple I never did. Um, Sunwell never did. Temptation to play Classic Burning Crusade? No, I can't say I do have that temptation. Uh, I, I I don't think anything can replicate the, the circumstances of then. And I think I, I, I prefer to kind of keep those memories how they are. Uh, I had so much fun in that time. Probably one of the most fun times I've ever had in gaming that I, I, I don't even want to touch those memories. I don't I don't necessarily want to relive them either. They're perfect as they are. As, as, cheesy, as, as cheesy how it is, uh, that, that's how I feel about it. I've, yeah, I've, I've took a lot of flack recently because obviously every content creator in the world is doing TBC and I'm more power to them if they're enjoying the Burning Crusade and hyped for it. I'm not. Like, I, like you were saying there, TBC was kind of my highlight of the entire World of Warcraft experience. I can't remember a bad day I had I mean, I can remember some moments, um, like freaking out on the guild at Hydros and just being like completely fucking done with the bullshit of people telling me their mums won't let them play and stuff like that. Um, 
having me level the last two of your paladin. <laughs> you did. You capped my paladin. Mm -hmm. uh, was I done? Was I like, I can't do anymore? Because like, I, I played a lot to cap that paladin very um, early. Oh, yeah. Uh, you went hardcore uh, to get together yeah. with Ghosty. Um, but yeah, I think the last couple of levels, I, I think you were kind of like threatening to quit and stuff. <laughs> and at that yeah. point, as the guild leader, as the rate leader, uh, that, that carried some weight, even though you were being a little bit facetious. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. really going to quit, but I was burnt out to hell. What annoyed mm. me more is we were... This is kind of a different tale, I know, but uh, what annoyed <laughs> me at that time... Yes, I account shared for a brief moment in the Burning Crusade with this Nobs. Don't get me, Blizz. It was innocent. I didn't quit. You got a lot of money out of it. Um, we were aiming to be the... I was aiming to be the first paladin on the server capped. That was my goal. Because as I was guildmaster and raid leader for our TBC guild that we made, and we made a fresh one, and so I wanted to be there with the guild's first raid. Uh, so that meant I had to go way harder than anyone else, because I had this... Because unlike now, it's actually good. The pre-patch, they're letting them level Blood Elves and Draenei before the game launches, which is oh, really nice. Good. Yeah, but they they didn't do that in the Burning Crusade actual launch. You had to nope. start fresh on the day it came out. Um, So... <laughs> I was definitely done, and the fuckers in Celebrity, who were a way better guild than we had, uh, they, they, they capped, I think I was 50 and they'd capped, and I was like, piss on you, man, and it was, it was, it was Bing, uh, I think it was called Bang, because you played with him, I think, in Harlequins. Uh, uh, did, he was did, a mage did, called did, Bang. Did he go to a paladin, Bang? Yeah, and he became a paladin called Bing. Okay, um, oh, yeah, I think I remember, yeah. Good guy, yeah. good guy. <laughs> yeah, good I mean, nothing, I don't have no, no ill feelings there, but I remember being like, someone saying, oh, Paladin's already capped. I was like, bullshit, I have gone hardcore and not slept, and I'm still not, I'm still like 56 or something like that, and I checked, yep, level 70. And he just got a group of people to boost him, and I was like... <laughs> That's just kind of what happens when you're, I mean, he was arguably like the top mage on the server, right? So he had power. Yeah. He yeah. had, he had basically like streamer privilege back then. <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> that was definitely done. But a story for another time of the Burning Crusade. Uh, thank you for tuning in for this. If you're interested in this, let us know if you enjoyed this conversation and we will do some more. If it's mm -hmm. not, we've got... Um, we're actually starting a little teaser for our next Friday feature. Is actually going to be... We're finally making the judgment on when the specs were the best. Um, when was Arms Warrior the best it ever was? I, I know. Decide. Do you know? <laughs> You're gonna, I know when you think it was, and you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you again. Absolutely. Bye-bye, guys.